I'd like to introduce our first speaker. And that is Rod Higgins, who is with the Tampa Bay Sports Commission. In June of 2004, the Tampa Bay Sports Commission named Rob Higgins as its executive director. Higgins' primary responsibility is to promote the development of community sports in the Tampa Bay area, as well as leading the Sports Commission as the principal organization that bids on and hosts sports and entertainment events in the Tampa Bay area and in Hillsborough County. In the 10 years that Rob has held this position, Tampa Bay has successfully hosted and or has been awarded a number of prestigious sporting events, including the 2008 NCAA Men's Basketball First and Second Rounds, the 2008 NCAA Women's Final Four, the 2009 NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship, the 2012 NCAA Men's Frozen Four, the 2015 NCAA Women's Final Four, which just took place, the 2016 Frozen Four, the 2007 17 College Football National Championship and the 2022 SEC Men's Basketball Tournament, which is unbelievable, y'all. Higgins served on the first on the big committee, which successfully landed the 2009 Super Bowl, and the Operations Committee, which handled several event logistics. He has been named to the Tampa Bay Business Journal's 30 Under 30 list, and the Tampa Bay Times named Higgins as one of the top 10 difference makers in the Tampa Bay area. Mr. Higgins is a graduate of Jesuit High School in the University of South Florida. Please welcome Rob Higgins. Like this. 
It was so outstanding to be able to relax and lay out by the pool when we had a few moments. I want to come back here. Their star guard, Jewel Lloyd, had this to say. None of us have really experienced anything like the warmth of this place and the warmth of the people. I'll remember it forever. When you get people talking about Tampa Bay, not in terms of the temperature when it comes to warmth, but in terms of the hospitality, that's when people will end up coming back. And then finally, one last comment from the really the people, the decision makers when it comes to this, this event and if and when it comes back. The players were happy, the coaches were happy, the fans were happy, and that makes us, the NCAA, very happy. There was a personal touch and a can-do attitude. Everything was well done. It was such a professional, well-oiled machine here. I can't think of anything that could have been done better. We look forward to coming back in 2019. It's from Anuka Brown at the NCAA, their Vice President for Women's Basketball. I want to give everybody a round of applause in this room for being a big part of that. Whether you know it or not, and the only thing I, I, I'd love for you to take away from our conversation this morning, whether you, you've thought in these terms previously or, or it's ever resonated with you, you're all members of Team Tampa Bay. Team Tampa Bay is a special group. It's unlike any other community in the country. And, and uh, it's just, it's incredible how Team Tampa Bay rallies around these events. Whether you purchase tickets and attended the games, whether you volunteered, whether you simply smiled and greeted a visitor that was here, you saw him in a Yukon shirt or a Notre Dame shirt, whatever it may be. Whatever you did to make this event as special as it was, will forever impact our community. You know, the Sports Commission, we're, we're so fortunate to play a role and work with our community partners on bidding and organizing these major events. But we also get a chance to go after a lot of youth and amateur events. These youth and amateur events take place each and every weekend here. There was 119 of them last year. Youth soccer, travel volleyball, you know, it could be softball, baseball, you name the sport, these events are taking place each and every weekend here, and it's huge business for our economy. Those events this past year generated 150,000 hotel visitor room nights. I see Santiago Prada here from, from Visit Tampa Bay. We have such an incredible partnership with their group and under his leadership, it's loaded leadership, it's, it's never been, been stronger. And what we're doing, on the sports and entertainment side of things with them, they're doing it on the convention and leisure side. And tourism is, is absolutely booming. But whether you have a, a child, I know nobody in this group's old enough to have grandchildren, for sure. But if you have a child and you go to an event, they play sports, and you go to another event in another community, you're going to spend, as you know, you're going to spend some money there. You're going to spend money in their hotels, you're going to spend money in their restaurants, you're going to spend money in their shops. We want you to think in terms of being able to get that event here. So it's as easy as reaching out to us and letting us know what that event may be, what the name of it is, what it was like, and give us a shot to go after it. Because at the end of the day, if we can recruit that event to our community, it's going to help our community in, in numerous ways. You know, I was asked to talk a little bit about me personally as well. I was born and raised in, in Tampa. At the age of eight, I really got a chance to start working uh, as a ball kid at the University of South Florida. You know, despite this imposing presence and my newfound height here, <laughs> I, um, I knew I was never going to play Division One basketball. I wanted to be a part of something, so I ended up getting a chance to, to work with the team at, at USF. And I, I got a chance to work in my high school at, at Jesuit to be able to, to leave each day uh, from there and get to practice. I started traveling as a, uh, as a freshman at Jesuit to all the, the USF road games. I got a chance to, to be a part of that. 
And then actually when it was time for me to finally go to school, uh, people thought they were getting rid of me on campus little they know they had four more years of me. But it was a situation where I just was so fortunate to get ingrained in it at an early age and to volunteer and, uh, and to be a part of that. And that, that's what's really made, I think, Team Tampa Bay so special is the people that get, get together all rally for these major events to be a part of, of something special. So again, I, I'd love for this group, if you, if you don't mind, if you think of an event that would make sense, if you could think of an opportunity that our community could go after while Super Bowls and Women's Final Fours and Frozen Fours are so special to our community. We're going to do, continue to do everything we can to, to, to uh, stake claim to as many of those as possible. But if you could also uh, think about some of those youth and amateur events that would make a lot of sense for our community, certainly we'd love for you to reach out and let us know that. You know, I want to leave some time here as, as referenced earlier by Penny to, to open it up some questions and make it more of a, a, a dialogue than just a monologue. But I also want to kind of peel back the curtain and, uh, and wrap here with a letter that we wrote to our team right before Women's Final Four. And I think it gives you a little bit of insight in terms of, of our mentality when it comes to these events. And now that you're all official Team Tampa Bay members, congratulations. And by the way, I, I uh, love how lively this group is early in the morning. Um, we're not going to say it's because of the caffeine. I think it's just because you have that Team Tampa Bay DNA where you're shot out of a cannon at all times. And you make every day game day like ourselves. But I want to read you this letter. This is something right before Women's Final Four started. We placed on each of our, our team teammates' chairs and, and gave them something leading into the week. And, uh, and now that your teammates will share it with you. When you were hired, you took a personality test. This test detailed who you are and how you handled specific situations. Despite our natural individual differences, the tests prove that we all have collective things in common. It's those common threads that make our team special. No matter the stressful situation we're put in, the way each of us are wired, our mutual DNA, if you will, is why we're the best community of our kind on the planet. So what is the DNA of Team Tampa Bay? While this list isn't all inclusive, here's who we are. We're leaders. We have a relentless sense of urgency. We have an, an inherent ability to do things the right way. We never compromise our core values. We're unflappable under pressure. We're tireless, and in parentheses I put, we exude looking and feeling fresh. <laughs> we are always happy to help. We don't let anything slip through the cracks, no matter whether the cracks are ours or somebody else's. We're moment makers for anyone we come in contact with. Just good enough isn't enough for Team Tampa Bay. We treat every fan, volunteer, and person like they're the single most important person to this overall effort. We're chess players, not chess pieces, because we think three moves ahead and are working on tomorrow, today. That makes us proactive instead of reactive. We have backup plans for our backup plans. We're still selling like we haven't been awarded the next event. We ask ourselves, what could make this better? And finally, we enjoy the journey. This is a week you'll never forget. You've worked several months to make this event better than it's ever been. We've got 10 days to set the bar at an all new level and show why our DNA is unlike anyone else's. Thanks for all you're doing to make this special. It's our time, Team Tampa Bay. So welcome to Team Tampa Bay. We hope you enjoy wearing the same jersey as us, and we look forward to many, many wins years to come.